everyone, welcome back to the shop once again. Uh, today we're working on a 2010 Expedition, 5.4 liter three valve engine of course, doing a full timing set on here. It has about 150,000 miles on it, but the engine is super, super clean. Um, so this is a good demonstration engine to show you guys in detail how to remove and install the roller followers in the 5.4 liter three valve engine. Now I've gone over this in detail as far as removing them. The procedure is, you know, basically the reversal of removal, uh, but a lot of people got caught up on that. How do you get them back into the engine? When to put them back in? All that stuff. So we're going to address that today. Let's get to it. All right, here we go. Now this procedure is exactly the same for every one of these roller followers. Every one of them on the engine. You're going to follow the exact same procedure. It doesn't matter. So we're gonna go after this one right here. And as you can see, or maybe not see, the nose or tip of this camshaft lobe is actually touching and actuating this, this roller follower right now. We're not on the base circle or the fat part of the cam lobe. So it's under a lot of pressure right now and tension. So you wanna get off of there, release some of that tension, and then of course gain us some clearance. Uh, so we can get it out of there that much easier. And the way that you do that is you simply come down to the crankshaft dampener. You're going to have an 18 millimeter bolt on there if the front cover is on. And you can use a socket and a half inch ratchet to turn it clockwise until that particular cam lobe is on base circle. Or if it's off, like mine is, for a timing job, you can use a 32 millimeter six point axle nut socket fits right over there on the keyway and we can turn it same thing either way we're going to turn the crankshaft until that cam lobe is at base circle on the roller follower we're working on okay so you're probably wondering what is base circle how does that actually look on the camshaft now this is a worn camshaft out of a 543 valve okay and you can see this is the camshaft lobe right here it's not perfectly round, it's oblong. And there's a tip to it right here, you can see that sticks out. And these right here on each side are called ramps, okay? But down here, you'll see it's basically one big wide circle, and that's what they call base circle. So base circle is easy to identify and find by looking for the nose. Once you find the nose, right here where it comes to a point, it's 180. So 180 over is base circle. So anywhere in this area right here, you're good to go. You can see how from the center line of the camshaft, it doesn't stick down nowhere near as far towards the roller follower as this one does. You see the difference? So there's less material sticking down. It's not actuating the um, roller follower. Therefore, it's under less tension and it'll come out that much easier. So find that base circle and get the base circle lined up with the roller follower and we can start pulling it out. Okay, so we're gonna concentrate on this one right here. It's nice and easy to get in there and film. Um, right now, the nose of this lobe is contacting it. So we need to go ahead and turn the crank shaft so that we can get into base circle on there. And you'll see the pressure being relieved in that valve spring. Uh, for that roller that you're actually working on. So now the nose is off of there, and we're gonna keep going. We're going to bring it around 180. So the nose is basically 180 from that roller follower. It's under very little pressure then. It'll feel, you know, almost loose in there. Okay, so right about there is good to go. And you'll notice you'll be able to move it a little bit, no problem. Now, comes this fancy tool from OTC, uh, which I'll link to down below. It's a great little tool made just for the 5 4 3 valve to get these things out of here. And then we're going to take this claw like piece right here and we're going to get it right on top of the valve stem retainer. We're gonna put it right on top of it, just like so, underneath the actual roller follower, okay? And then we're gonna line up the flat on here. It'll come right through just like that. And then there's just a simply a, a tightening or adjusting knob on here. 
So we're gonna thread it in, okay? And then you're gonna make sure that this is pushed all the way in to the camshaft and it'll sit on the other side and support itself. And then we'll make sure this is perfectly aligned on there. Okay, just like so, so it's nice and straight on top of there. And then and this is a very important part. You wanna put your thumb, your finger, put some good pressure down on top of that roller follower, okay? So it pushes down the valve stem and the roller follower and everything all together as we're compressing that valve spring. You don't wanna lose your keepers because then we're pulling the cylinder head. So push down and you simply twist the knob. And you're only using hand pressure for this. So it's quite impossible, see it's already popped out of there, to actually bend a valve. Okay, so at that point, since it does have a screw function on there, we're nice and straight on there, we're holding it down, Yep, we're not losing the keepers. You can see it comes right out of there. Now certain ones, they'll come this way and certain, you know, this way, and certain ones will come that way. You just simply kind of wiggle it around a little bit. Get it past a few uh, valve train components on here. Get it past. And you can get it out of here. This is the way to do it though. And for these ones that are really stuck like this, like in a weird place, like this one's half on top of the other one and everything else, um, a magnet really helps. Just kind of wiggle it out of there and get it out of there. to the other side here and now we're simply I mean, once you have it loose like this it's gonna come out especially if you're on base circle but some of these as you can see they're a little tricky getting out of here they don't want to they don't want to leave their homes um, but once it's loose you will get it out it just depends on the configuration are you next to a spark plug hole like that which side did it pop out on? All that good stuff. I guess this one's pretty good to go. Get it up and out of there. And there it is. So it's out of there. You can inspect it or just replace them or um, get them out of there for your timing job or whatever. And that is how you remove a roller follower on a 543 valve. One pre-check you want to do is to check your valve stem keepers right here and make sure they're fully in there, locked in and flush with the retainer up top here. Uh, that way you know everything's locked together and good to go still and we can start putting this thing back in safely. Uh, so it's the exact same procedure, but I'll show you uh, just to make it ultra clear. So we'll go in here, get it right on top of the retainer there, the valve stem, get that guy in there. Okay, threading started. Make sure everything's good to go. Nice and square over here. So you push down on it. I'll turn it to the side so you guys can see that. There we go. And we're gonna start tightening this. Now you might notice the keepers, they start, they, they're gonna start rising like that. And that's why you need to get in here, push down that valve stem as you are compressing it with the tool. Check them, okay, they're still good to go. They're not popping up on us. And you simply tighten this thing all the way down until it stops. Again, it does not matter where the piston is at because this thing, you're only using a little knob. You're not gonna be able to bend anything. And then we'll take our new roller follower, which a very smart guy pointed out to me, has a very small hole now. 
You can barely fit a pin through them compared to, yeah, look at the size of that hole before. And that's the oil comes out of the lash adjuster and squirts onto the uh, lobes here to lubricate them. So if you're having oil pressure issues, you may want to also change out to the new lash, uh, roller followers because that's a severe restriction in there. It's going to help with oil pressure across the engine. Now going back in, just remember that this side, this bulb side, uh, goes onto the lash adjuster, and on this side, it goes onto the valve stem tip right there. So, just gotta kinda work it in here and get it past everything. It's still gonna be a little tight. You have to maneuver around, maneuver around, uh, so you can get it in there and lay it straight. And this is why it's such a you know chore usually to do these, is because it's just the clearance in here is just it's tight, and you got to really maneuver around. Okay, so looks good to go. Touching back here, making sure we're in that pocket on the lash adjuster, and then up front here, of course, it just sits down in there. And then you're simply going to. Release the tension. And that's all there is to it. Get all these pieces out of here. And there it is, installed. I like to go over them, make sure they're sitting in there real nice. With your fingers on each side, you have a good feel for them. You can go down and just start checking them real fast like that. And make sure they're in there. Again, for those of you out there that are completing a full timing kit like this one right here, everything's all new and you come to the point where you need to put those roller followers back in, just go ahead and pick the cylinders and the cam lobes that are on base circle facing the followers, put them in, and then simply rotate the crankshaft until the next set of cam lobes are facing base circle. That's all you got to do. There's no particular order at all. Just make sure that base circle and compress the spring as shown and pop them in there. Make sure they're nice and seated and they'll be good to go for startup.